Assalamu alaikum dear students. Uh, these days, as you know, we are, you know, talking about paragraph writing. Uh, and uh, in our last, you know, a couple of classes, we talked about different types of paragraphs. And there, you know, we studied simple listing paragraphs, order of importance paragraphs, time order paragraphs, spatial paragraphs. And then, like, we moved, uh, you know, into multi-paragraph compositions and we talked about you know what actually multi-paragraph composition is how it differs from a simple you know paragraph and how four basic types of you know paragraphs are you know used in multi-paragraph composition and how the skeleton or the structure of a simple paragraph is different from you know, multi-paragraph, and where are the similarities we talked about. And if you remember, we talked about the characteristics of, uh, you know, paragraphing also, that unity is there, and, uh, you know, it's coherence and uh, development. Now, these are three important features, you know, which uh, writers, you know, have to keep in mind, you know, while, uh, you know, going about producing, you know, paragraphs. Of course, Today, we'll uh, continue with uh, multi-paragraph composition because uh, two very important multi-paragraph compositions like uh, contrastive composition and cause and effect compositions are left. And I'll discuss, you know, first these two. Then I'll give you one more, you know, important composition style, which is actually, I mean, uh, generally we call it, you know, Greek, you know, presentation of information, actually, style. It is, it has, you know, five components, you know, we'll discuss one by one those components. And then we'll move towards our second important point uh, in today's lecture. That will be how to analyze an essay, you know, question. Or you can say the topic statement or the question statement of an essay, how to analyze it and how it guides us you know, uh, about the type of, uh, you know, material or information needed. And, uh, you know, then after this, we'll move towards third and the last important part of our today's lecture, which will be high impact language. Now, this high impact language there, we actually will be able successfully to review uh, all that we have done so far you know, towards uh, paragraph writing. For example, we'll talk about, uh, once again, word. We'll talk about, you know, grammar and structure. Then we'll move into paragraphing. And lastly, we'll talk about appearance. So this high-impact language will give us, once again, an opportunity to review, you know, what we've done in uh, our, you know, last, you know, classes. Let's now move towards uh, our sixth type of paragraph as a whole and the second multi-paragraph, you know, type, which is contrastive argument. Now, contrastive, you know, uh, composition means that you compare, let's say, two things, or more than two things, okay? For example, you can compare two persons. You can compare, you know, two cities, for example. You can compare two historical, let's say, places. What actually you do in contrastive, uh, you know, composition, of course, you start with the topic sentence. Here, when we say multi-paragraph composition, like if you compare paragraphs, topic sentence, and multi-paragraph compositions, you know, topic sentence, of course, there'll be a slight difference. Over there, this is uh, of a sentence length, for example. But in multi-paragraph, you know, the same topic sentence actually is given as an independent, separate, you know, paragraph. So the first paragraph of this composition will be, of course, introductory paragraph, which is going to contain itself the topic sentence. And topic sentence, you know, as you know, is the central idea or the theme, you know, of your essay or your, you know, composition. And after this, you know, you'll move towards uh, the body of uh, multi-paragraph composition. Now, the body of multi-paragraph composition means... If we are comparing, for example, two uh, historical places, then the first place in the second paragraph, for example, and then the second place in the third paragraph. 
Now, when we say first historical place in the second paragraph, it means that again its skeleton will be the same one. The first will be, if I'm, for example, comparing, you know, uh, let's say the history of Lahore and the history of, let's say, Karachi, then the first sentence of uh, Lahore, of course, is going to be the central idea again, or you can say the topic sentence. And then it's sportive details, what different points I, you know, want to talk about Lahore, for example. And then before I, you know, switch over to my uh, second, you know, uh, city or second, you know, item of discussion, I would like to, you know, wind my discussion up about Lahore in a concluding line. So this will be our second paragraph of contrasting. And then I'll move, of course, towards the second city, which I, the history of Karachi, for example, if I, when I talk about, then, of course, the first line, of course, is the central idea, a topic sentence, then sportive details, and the last one will be concluding. After this all, after this whole discussion, we'll then move towards the closing paragraph, which, again, will be a concluding remarks, you know, by the uh, writer for his readers. So this is how, you know, this, uh, multi, uh, this uh, you know, contrastive argument, this multi-paragraph, you know, composition, you know, will be, uh, you know, built across whatever, like, you know, the topic actually has been uh, given. Before I move towards the uh, last multi-paragraph composition, cause and effect, I would like to give you one example so that you, know, you could really see that, you know, how the structure of a multi-paragraph composition, especially this uh, contrastive composition, you know, is all about. Take a look. On your screen, there is one piece of composition, and uh, it's titled as Two Big Cities. Now, you can see the first paragraph actually is, the first paragraph is the introductory paragraph, which actually is the topic, you know, sentence, or a topic paragraph in which you actually set the whole scene, what you're going to do in the upcoming, you know, lines. Then in the second paragraph, you know, first city you'll talk about. In the next paragraph, second city. Of course, there are central ideas, the sportive details, the closing lines. This, the whole fashion, you know, of course, will be repeated in the second paragraph and then closing. Let's go through it. The first paragraph, when I revisited Southern California after about 40 years, I found that many changes had taken place. The biggest change was in the landscape. The change that I noticed second was in the space of life. Now, in this uh, composition, what writer is going to do? He's, of course, going to talk about the changes, you know, which has, uh, you know, taken place, changes which have taken place. And he mentioned two changes, you know. Number one, he talked about landscape. And second, he talked about, you know, space of life. Now, these two changes, you know, he would be discussing in two, you know, different paragraphs. And the cities which uh, he's going to talk about, he has already given you about, Let's go ahead with the uh, first paragraph, which is actually the body of this, you know, multi-paragraph composition. It goes this way. Forty years ago, the land around Los Angeles was mostly farms and open spaces. This is what? This is the topic sentence of, you know, this very paragraph. And after this very paragraph, you know, there'll be what? The sportive details towards what actually is the topic sentence. Like, it took only a few minutes to drive out of the city and feel one was in the country. On returning to the city 40 years later, I was immediately struck by the amount of building that had taken place. Former farmland was now residential communities. Barren canyons were filled with schools, shops, and houses. Near desert areas were filled with large industrial parks. This was the most dramatic change I noticed. Now, writer, before, you know, switching over to the next paragraph, he, you know, likes concluding it in one line that this was the most dramatic change I noticed. And now if we move towards the second paragraph, I mean to say the second paragraph of the body of this, you know, composition, you will see the second biggest change seemed to be in the space of life. Now this is the topic sentence. And then of course he will be discussing the, you know, the body or you can say the sportive details, you know, about the same, you know, topic line. How it goes? When I first went to Los Angeles, it seemed a relaxed and easygoing community where, you know, time was less important than comfort. On the other hand, today's Los Angeles is as active and exciting as any city in the country. Indeed, it seems as hectic as any other city. Now, again, 
the conclusion of the second paragraph is there. So this is how like you know we move about the quality of you know this uh, multi paragraph composition is that you know you have uh, main topics and then minor topics and the fashion the skeleton which we've already discussed of paragraphs like you start from the uh, central idea which is of course the topic line then argumentation then closing and the first sentence of course is indented the same is repeated actually in every paragraph that's the beauty of it now things which are like don'ts uh, the don't of long you know this uh, composition will be that uh, don't take it this way that once topic sentence mentioned in the first paragraph there is no need to talk any about the subtopics of uh, your composition that would be actually a blunder if you do it every paragraph has to have the same four features you know which we've actually decided upon the first feature don't forget that topic sentence every paragraph doesn't matter that you know you have given topic sentence in the first paragraph it doesn't matter every paragraph has its own skeleton that has to be like you know followed strictly rigidly like anything every paragraph central idea supportive detail closing first sentence indented doesn't matter like you know it's a longer you know composition or it's just one paragraph size composition doesn't matter fashion has to be repeated you know from top to the bottom of this you know this uh, multi paragraph compositions let's now move towards our last multi uh, paragraph composition which is actually cause and effect now when i say cause and effect these are of course two points one is the cause and second is effect for example your topic is uh, let's say brain drain you want to talk about now brain drain its cause its effect now in one paragraph one two three ten twenty doesn't matter how many causes you want to talk about they are all going to stay in one paragraph and one paragraph will be what effects of the brain drain all right these will be the two paragraphs which we going to call actually the body of your paragraphs before i mean above this will be one paragraph which we're going to talk about the topic paragraph or the topic sentence or a paragraph containing central idea or the theme of your composition and under these two there'll be one last paragraph which is going to be what of course the concluding paragraph in which you know uh, information going to flow out either from the first paragraph which is your central idea or can flow out from the body of the paragraph the cause and effect you know could be facts and figures could be you know summarized actually in uh, you know few lines so this is how you know this uh, essay will be you know constructed cause and effect doesn't matter if the topic is uh, let's say overpopulation for example so what what's the cause of overpopulation what are the effects of overpopulation again the same way in one paragraph you know cause in second paragraph you know effects down you know downstairs will be you know the concluding paragraph upstairs of course will be the opening paragraph containing central you know idea this is how cause and effect compositions are constructed please do not forget i'm stressing it upon again and again rather i'm overstating it and uh, and i mean that that every paragraph every paragraph has to have its own central idea and its own concluding idea otherwise you know we would say that uh, there is some sort of like you know kind of vague feeling you know in you that you are you know breaking your composition up into smaller groups not paragraphs so we would call actually groups of sentences not paragraphs when we say paragraphs it means you know every sentence every sorry paragraph has to have its own opening line closing line inside whatever matter you want to give please follow this as a ritual without this you are going to you know of course uh i i i would say confuse your readers actually that uh, why you know he you know uh, broke this piece of composition into two paragraphs without concluding so you are going to leave your readers actually in confusion if you do not follow the paragraphic paragraph building criteria for each and every unit inside the longer you know compositions 
A few examples I would like to show you what are cause and effect compositions, and then of course we'll move towards our uh, second point of today's lecture, how to analyze, uh, you know, an asset topic. Let's take a few, you know, examples of cause and effect composition. Now you can take a look on your screen. Topic is choosing my career. Now you can see one, two, three, and four paragraphs. Four paragraphs means one is opening, last one is what you call concluding paragraph. Inside two paragraphs, one is cause and second is effect. So this is how this, you know, uh, composition is constructed. You can see the first paragraph. My decision to become a nurse was based on several well thought out reasons. This is what? This is the topic sentence. And some of my reasons had to do with personal goals. Other reasons had to do with my view of society and where I want to fit into society. Now, this is how the opening is there. And now we're going to jump into what? The uh, second paragraph, which is going to be the cause, for example. During my last year in high school, I had several long conversations with my parents about what to do after I graduated. Through these talks, I was able to clarify my career goals. I wanted a job with good pay and good status. These were not my only goals. I also wanted a job that would help people in a practical way, a job that could make people's lives better. Now these, what she's actually talking about, or he's talking about, you know, all the causes, you know, which led him or her, you know, to some direction or to some career. Now let's take a look at the third paragraph. Taking these reasons into consideration, I was able to narrow down my choice to two jobs. The first was teaching. I have always liked children, and I like teaching people to do things. A teacher also makes decent living and gets a fair amount of respect if he or she does her job well. I would also be able to help people as a teacher. The second choice was nursing. Nursing met all my criteria for a job. In addition, it is a job I could continue to do periodically or part-time if I decided to have children. Finally, I decided on nursing as a career since it offered me a good paying, respected position with a lot of flexibility. So did you see, we talked about, you know, choosing my career. In the opening paragraph, we just set the scene. In the second paragraph, we talked about different reasons, actually, different causes, actually, involved, involved of course, in this decision-making thing. The third paragraph, you know, then uh, the short listing towards this decision making, and then why one you know side was taken up and other side was you know given up, why nursing profession was chosen, that was actually the effect, and then different you know uh, argumentation which was needed. I mean to further like uh, you know clarify the situation, and then in the last paragraph you know the writer actually did what concluded, and how the conclusion is: I am now in my last year of nursing school, and I am looking forward to starting my professional life, I feel certain I made the right choice. So this is how essay has been concluded. These are cause and effect compositions. Let's move towards, and, and, and let me tell you one thing, this is what actually seven types of paragraph and, you know, multi-paragraph compositions are. Now I'm going to give you one plus, I mean, for your information, for your interest, and maybe you would, you know, like that. That's actually Greek, you know, style of Presentation. Presentation of what? Presentation of, you know, facts and figures. Presentation of, you know, the information actually which you, you know, want to share with your readers. This style is highly persuasive one. How writers like, you know, go about this, uh, like in cause and effect, you know, we cause one paragraph, effect second paragraph. In, uh, you know, multi-paragraph composition, if I want to talk about my two friends, for example, so in one paragraph, my one friend, in second paragraph, second friend. What happens in Greek presentation, actually? Of course, there will be an introdu introductory paragraph. Now, the difference in multi-paragraph, comp uh, this, this uh, Greek presentation is that here, we do not disclose. Please, I, I need your attention, that in Greek presentation, there is a slight difference. We have seen in all types of paragraphs, whether they are, you know, one paragraph or multi-paragraph, we've seen that first sentence or first paragraph is always the central idea, the theme, the topic sentence. But in Greek presentation, first paragraph is not the central idea, is not the theme, is not the topic sentence. This is just what? This is just, uh, you can say, 
a few sentences which could set not a very, very narrow topic sentence or central idea means, you know, very narrow down, you know, line which, you know, sets up your thesis. Whereas here in Greek, we do talk about the scene, but it's a very broad, very global, you know, scene. We just write a few sentences just to keep ourselves you know, relevant to. And in second paragraph, you know, that's called narration. Narration means, you know, we, in this paragraph, share some personal experience or some sort of facts and figures or some, you know, stories or some even, uh, doesn't matter, depends upon the type of composition, you know, you are about jokes even. No, these are what these are such uh, narrations actually, which uh, are so tightly written, and they are extremely relevant towards what actually you want to talk about. That readers, without being informed, automatically, after reading the first global starting, and then that story or that narration part, automatically understand. Okay, what now this writer is going to talk about in the next coming paragraphs. This is a very persuasive style, actually. Very much what we call that. We very, very slowly, we grab reader's attention, actually. And then, you know, we uh, persuade him towards what actually we, what we, we, we talk about. If we compare Greek presentation with any paragraph writing style, the difference is in ordinary paragraphing style, what happens that after reading the very first sentence, Readers understand, okay, what he will be talking about in the upcoming paragraphs. But in Greek presentation, in the first paragraph, readers do not have any idea, actually. Yeah, they can have a very broad idea, a global idea. In the second paragraph, again, they are, right, writer actually is sharing with them sort of story, joke, could be, you know, facts and figures, just to grab their attention. But still in here, they do not find that very line which could very categorically mention that, you know, this is what actually I want to talk about. No. Then comes the third, which is what? Disclosure. In here, actually, we disclose what we want to talk about. With an assumption, with an assumption that reaching this point, all my readers, you know, now they, you know, will have understood so or will have guessed actually about what I will be talking about in the upcoming paragraphs. And then comes in, of course, the same way, argumentation in the fourth paragraph now, which is a real bulky paragraph. You know, there you talk actually about all different arguments, you know, which you want to talk about. And this is, uh, you can say, the actual part of your, this, you know, composition, bigger in size, of course, in uh, practical sense, this is the actual body of your, you know, this composition. And then comes, you know, we do not then after this, after this body, we do not jump to conclusion actually. Rather, we give one more paragraph, which we call as, you generally we call it, you know, antithesis, but here I would like to call it contrast. Contrast means, you know, showing your readers other side of the coin also. Now, what I have talked about that a very, very broad, very, very global, generalized opening, and then jumping on to narration. Narration means actually uh, telling such an experience, which is reader's experience also. Telling such a story which could really, you know, bind them, which could really grab their attention, which could really, you know, win reader's focus, and then you jump to disclosure. Disclosure is the third point where you actually tell what I want to talk. So it means topic sentence you reveal in the third paragraph. And then comes the body of your paragraph, which is the actual, of course, part of your composition. And then no conclusion, but contrast. Contrast means sharing the other side of the coin, sharing another perception about the situation, and after this, you know, you close the concluding remark. And, interesting thing, in ordinary paragraphing, I mean, uh, in ordinary compositions, our conclusion is what? We say it should flow out from, 
if you remember, I repeatedly said the same thing, your conclusion should flow out either from the topic sentence or from the body of your paragraph. But in Greek presentation style, conclusions, you know, they do not summarize. When I said they do not summarize, it means their approach is not backward actually. See, when we summarize things, what happens actually? We start recounting things which we which we had been actually talking about. You you go back. When I say, let me summarize, it means I'll be counting again those points which I have actually discussed with you. But in Greek presentation, you know, our approach is, you know, forward, not backward. We do not talk about, you know, what I have said, you know, in the previous uh, paragraphs or lines, but actually we talk about what now are, uh, what's the use actually of the whole information which I've discussed with you, how to implement this actually, this information which I discussed with you in, uh, you know, practical arena. So this is how this uh, Greek presentation style, you know, is, uh, you know, different from uh, the ordinary, you know, paragraphing style. Now let's move towards our second uh, important part of today's lecture, which is how to analyze our essay questions, or you can say how to analyze, you know, the problem statements in an essay. An essay topic, you know, can give you three very important points which uh, we of course can uh, learn about by analyzing. Like uh, first important thing an essay topic tells you the strategy actually. For example, strategy here means when I say as a, let's say if I assign you some uh, task to do and I say discuss or if I say compare or if I say contrast or if I say, you know, critique for example. So these all, uh, you know, words which I just talked about set up the strategy, you know, for that essay. And second is the content of your essay. Now, content of essay means when I say discuss A and B, for example, now discuss is the strategy, A and B is the content, you know, of your essay. And then comes the prompts. Prompts are what? Prompts are the number of points or the number of aspects, you know, this essay asks you or this composition asks you to discuss. Let's take a look and uh, practically let's, you know, analyze uh, essay topics and then see like, you know, how an essay topic, you know, uh, you know, construct, construct, you know, for us, uh, you know, paths actually to move on and, uh, you know, go about, you know, writing. Let's take a look. On your screen, there is one topic, analyze Jesus' sermon on the mountain. Now, this topic, analyze Jesus' sermon on the mountain. And I gave you three points. Number one, I said an essay topic gives you uh, or guides you about the strategy. Number two, I said the whole content and then the prompts. Now, in this topic, analyze Jesus' sermon on the mountain. Analyze word is the strategy for this essay. And Jesus' sermon on the mount is called the content. Now, inside the content, you know, we have prompts. Now, it's a content line. There are prompts are Jesus' sermon on the mount. Look, Jesus probably, you know, gave many, you know, sermons, for example. So which sermon actually we are talking about? This is actually the prompt factor. Which sermon we are talking about? We are talking about the sermon, the one which is the sermon on the mountain, for example. So this is how a topic, three things. Don't forget that strategy. Strategy is what you're going to do about. Are you going to discuss it? Are you going to define it? Are you going to compare it? Or you're going to write a critique on it. Or you want to illustrate, for example. So all the, of course, I'll discuss with you and the meanings and the, you know, definitions also. Second part is called the content. Inside the content, you have prompts. Prompts are what? Aspects to discuss in your essay. One more example. Describe the major effects of reconstruction. Now, in this uh, topic, describe the major effects of reconstruction. The word describe is strategy. The major effects of reconstruction is the content line. Now, inside the content, you'll have prompts. Number one, major. Number two, effects. Number three, reconstruction. Now, effects, there may be, you know, many effects, for example, uh, primary, 
effects of primary nature, secondary nature, tertiary nature. We are only concerned with, you know, primary nature, which are, of course, major effects. Effects of what? Only of reconstruction. So we are going to discuss three things, actually, in this composition or in this essay, that different effects, of course, we'll say, like, you know, there are different effects, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but I'll only focus on A, B, and C, which are, you know, major effects. Uh, ma effects of what? Then reconstruction. Reconstruction actually is the context which this essay has, you know, set up for us. One more example for you. Compare the end of history with the clash of civilization. Now, strategy is compare. What to compare? Now, the content line are the end of history with the clash of civilization. Now, in this content line, there are two prompts. Number one, end of history. And number two, clash of civilization. This is how essay, you know, topics are analyzed. This is uh, also called, I mean, in some books you can uh, see that uh, prompts or uh, content part of this essay topic is also called, you know, terms of question. Find out the terms of question. The terms of question is the same thing. Decide about the strategy. Decide about the content. Inside the content, see what are different prompts which you're going to discuss. So this is how, you know, essay will be, you know, written. If I, uh, the same topic, if I discuss with you the effects of uh, media on society, discuss, let's say, the effects of media on society, discuss is going to be your strategy. I mean, when I say discuss, it means don't define it, don't compare it, don't illustrate it only, you know, discuss it, don't describe it. Don't narrate it. Only what? Discuss it. Number. This is the strategy, actually. And then comes the content line. Effects of media on society. Inside the content line, what are the prompts? Discuss effects. Effect is one prompt. Media is the second prompt. Third prompt is society. Now, these are three aspects which you're going to talk about. You are not just going to talk about what are the effects of media. No, no, no. Effects of media on society. And here, society, not just one particular society. We are, we are, we are like uh, talking about, you know, let's say a global society, for example. This is what actually the analysis of, you know, questioned, essay questions is, you know, all about. Before I move any further, I would like to discuss with you what are different strategies, you know, which uh, we can, you know, talk all about in our essays. As I uh, mentioned with you, discuss is one, describe is one. I have prepared a long list for you of different, you know, strategies. Let's try to understand the meanings, their definitions, what actually we mean by describe, what actually we mean by, you know, uh, compare, what we mean by, you know, illustrate. Like the first one, analyze. When we say analyze, it means break the subject down into parts and explain the various parts. Analyzing means break into smaller parts and then explain those smaller, you know, parts. This is what we call as analysis. Compare means what? Show how two things are similar as well as different. Include details or examples. When we compare things, the similarities and their differences, you know, we discuss. Contrast. The third strategy is contrast. Contrast means show how two things are different. Include details or examples. Just like, you know, in compare, in comparison. Then comes, you know, critique. Critique means, you know, point out both the good and bad points of something. Here, when, when you are like, you know, writing a critique, for example, simply you will be talking about the good side and the bad side. That's it. And it has to be highly objective, of course, not subjective. If it's subjective, then the word good and the word bad, of course, will be like, you know, full of perceptions. So very globally, like, you know, you'll be comparing the good side and the bad side, without giving your own personalized opinion about it. Then comes define. What is define? Define means give an accurate meaning of a term with enough detail to show that they really understand it. So in defining means accurate meaning of a term. Like I used with you the word end of history, for example. If I ask you define end of history, so here, you will not discuss the uh, application of end of history, you know, on the world politics, for example. No, you will only talk about what end of history 
you know, what are the meanings of end of history and uh, what actually, you know, it is all about. If I say clash of civilization, for example, I am not asking you that uh, write about whether, you know, it is happening these days or not. I mean, the international politics, you know, is all about clash of civilizations or not. Rather, uh, I have talked with you about that define, explain me, define what actually clash, clash of civilization is so that, you know, the meanings may be, you know, clear. Let's see some more strategies. When we say describe, it means write about the subject so the reader can easily visualize it. You describe in such a way that reader could easily visualize. There are like, you know, writers who paint the picture. There are speakers who paint the picture. When they write, they, you know, they speak, they take you to that place. I mean, words are of writers and experience are of, of course, yours. You feel as if like, you know, you are you know, watching it with your own eyes. So this is actually the quality of description is. Next comes what? Diagram. When I say diagram it, it means make a drawing of something and label its parts. Discuss. Discuss means give a complete and detailed answer, including important characteristics and main points. Then comes enumerate. Enumerate means write in list or outline form. Just list out points, prepare, prepare an outline, prepare a list, okay, and giving points one by one. If you remember, simple listing paragraphs actually are all about this enumeration. Next comes evaluate. Give your opinion of the value of the subject. Discuss its good and bad points, strengths and weaknesses. This is what evaluation is. Going, you know, further, we have explain. Explain mean give the meaning of something, give facts and details that make the idea easy to understand. Illustrate. Make the point or idea clearly by giving examples. Illustration means, you know, when you argumentation and you explain your argumentation, you know, with the help of some examples, some personal experiences. Even you can use analogies also to make your point clear. Next comes interpret. Tell about the importance of the subject. Explain the results of the effects of something. Then comes justify. What is justify? It means Give good reasons that support a decision, action, or event. Justification. And the last one, outline. Make an organized listing of the important point of the subject. So this is how, you know, some of the strategies, you know, I have discussed with you. And this is, these strategies actually demand a very different approach towards the information, you know, which you share with your uh, Readers, three, to sum this all, sum up this all, three important strategies. Number one, inform, examine, and analyze. Just to, just to explain you, actually, that how these strategies, you know, create a very different look and taste of the composition, you know, which you construct. When we talk about inform, I mean information only, okay? It means, I mean composition based on information. It means that you are only going to fulfill WHQs. If you have answered WHQs, it will be all right. Comes examine, for example. Now, in examination means that all different pieces of information, for example, W, WR, like, you know, five, who, what, when, where, why, and then one is how. All these, you know, answers you examine, you compare, and you contrast with each other. Let's say there were different sources of information. There were some interviews, some survey, and, you know, observation, your own observation. Now, information gotten out from these three different, you know, sources. In examination, actually, what you do, you compare and contrast the bits and pieces of, you know, this information, and then, of course, you conclude things. Analysis or analyze. In analyze, you know, what we do actually, we, based on our examinations, we try to forecast, predict, you know, talk about the resultants, for example. So this is how strategies affect your writing and the type of information you, you know, pick and choose for your composition. I hope you understand different paragraph 
types, uh, multi-paragraph composition, and then uh, how to analyze, you know, essay uh, topics. What are inside an essay? You know, topic, for example, strategy is the content is the inside the content, and you have prompts, which are different aspects. Actually, you're going to discuss in your composition. And then I discussed with you different types of, you know, strategies which uh, you can, you know, come across, uh, you know, in your writing this uh, game. Now, let's move towards what is high impact language. When we say high impact language, and I mentioned it before also, that high impact language will give you once again an opportunity to review what you've actually studied. High impact language is the name of three things. High impact word, high impact sentence and high impact appearance. We have talked enough about high, this, uh, you know, uh, words, for example, when we were talking about uh, word choices and then in style also, what type of words, you know, are, you know, proper words and uh, which words to be, you know, avoid, you know, to be avoided. And uh, here, what I actually mean by high impact word. High impact word is the name of two things. Number one, if you remember, when we talked about uh, qualities of good writing. Over there, I said short and familiar, you know, words are better choices for the writers. I mean, to make the, you know, messages go to the, you know, readers. So what are short and simple? We call them, you know, Anglo-Saxon language. I mean, Anglo-Saxon language, you can compare it with, you know, Latin, Latinate language, actually. Anglo-Saxon, you know, language of English, actually, this is, more familiar, actually. It's, of course, simple as well. Simple to understand as compared with the Latinate language, which are, you know, words of uh, bigger size, you know, lots of, you know, syllables inside, you know, and uh, difficult to understand. This will be this first principle, use Anglo-Saxon language. To give you an example of Anglo-Saxon language, let's say on your screen you can take a look. Pursuant is one word. And uh, its Anglo-Saxon translation is after. Ascertain is one word. And its easy translation in Anglo-Saxon will be find out. Now, just imagine. Ascertain and find out. The third one is objective. And its Anglo-Saxon translation is goal. And uh, then advice. Anglo-Saxon is, you know, tell. So, Latinate words. When you are to choose between two words, just ask yourself that, is it Anglo-Saxon? I mean, is it short and familiar? If answer is yes, choose that. If it's not, chances are that that would be Latinate language, Latinate word. Only educated, you know, readers, of course, can understand. A common reader, of course, will find it difficult to understand. The second now point in high-impact word is avoid wordiness. I mean, of course, you have already studied about, you know, what wordiness is. So when we say impact word, we mean by two things. Number one, short and familiar words. Number two, no wordiness. Wordiness means, of course, uh, use one word substitution. Don't use, you know, words which are in split form. To give you an example, like along the lines can be translated into according to. At this time is a wordy expression and it's, you know, one word substitution is, you know, now. So this is all about high impact words. Use short and familiar words. Number two, no wordiness. Let's now move towards what are high impact sentences. Look, you have studied, you know, that there are three types of sentences. Simple, compound, and uh, then complex, and then, you know, compound complex. So, in a way, you know, there are four. Simple, and then compound, and then complex, and then, you know, compound complex, multiple. Now, when we say high impact sentence, what actually it means? Simple sentence has the highest impact. When you use simple sentences, it has got the highest impact. Okay? So use simple sentences for maximum impact in your writing. When we say impact, what does it mean? It actually means that uh, the successful messaging, you know, readability, listenability, your written message, will be, of course, the one which is, un which will be, of course, understood. When we say high impact, it has, it, you will be able, I mean, to make your message successful. Successfully, of course, it will move across your readers and they'll understand. This is actually, we, we call it, you know, high impact. 
Now, compound sentences. If you want to lower impact in your writing, for example, so you can use compound sentences. And when to use complex sentence? Complex sentence means you use it for two reasons. Complex sentence, high impact plus variety. Now, what we actually understand from high impact sentences? We understand from high impact sentences, you know, three things. Simple sentence, use simple sentence for maximum impact. Use complex sentence for maximum impact and variety. And number three, use compound sentence if you want to lower impact in your writing. This is all about, if you take a look on your screen, I ran the meeting is a simple sentence. And uh, second is, I ran the meeting and I wrote the minutes. The third sentence is, after I read the contract, I sent it to headquarters. First sentence is simple, highest impact. Second sentence is compound, lower impact. Third sentence is a complex, high impact and variety. Now, just see, it's, it's not an easy game actually. It's, it's, it's quite difficult in a way. Look, uh, practically speaking, uh, when you count your sentences, let's say there are 10 sentences, you know, you are in your one paragraph. Let's say, if, we, if I ask you, count now your sentences, simple sentence, you know, of course, you will count as one. Complex sentence, also you're going to count as one. And compound sentence, of course, you will be counting as two. Why? Because there are two independent clauses. When I say, now, what is high impact language? High impact language is the one, a paragraph in which simple plus com complex sentences are more in number. Please keep, keep in mind what I'm trying to say is high impact paragraph or high impact language is the one in which simple and complex sentences are more in number Sim and compound sentences are less in number. Out of 10 sentences, if there are, let's say, four compound sentences, and I, as I told you, comp one compound sentence is equal to two sentences, it means, you know, four compound sentences actually mean 10 compound sentences. So make sure to have large number of simple and compound to increase impact in your writing. Second point of high impact sentences, put subject first. I mean, every sentence, you know, should have it's uh, subject first, and then verb second, and then object, you know, third. If you see the first sentence, assistance in designing a system tailored to a customer's needs provides. Now, in this sentence, there is no subject. When there is no subject, reader, of course, will be confused. So what actually we did in the second sentence, we entered, you know, the subject. And that is the attached checklist provides assistance in designing a system tailored to a customer's needs. The subject is very important for the correct meanings. And the third principle of high impact sentences, use active voice. Of course, now you know through, you know, uh, grammatical and effective sentences that passive sentence does what? It hides the true subject. In active and passive, uh, you, you, you know, in active we call active sentence the one in which subject is active. We call passive is the one like, you know, in which action, not actor, action becomes, you know, of more importance and object of active sentence becomes actually, you know, the subject of uh, passive sentence. So, always use active sentences. Inactive sentence, of course, focus will be on the actor, not on action or, you know, the verb completing elements. This is what we say high impact sentence. So far, I discussed with you that high impact language means three things. High impact word, high impact sentence. High impact word means short and familiar and no wordiness. High impact sentence means simple plus complex sentences. If you use these more in your writing, your language will be highly, I would say high impact. If you, if there are compound sentences more, your language will have low impact. Now, use active sentences and make sure if you're using active sentences, your subject is very much present in your sentence. Now, let's come down to high impact appearance. High impact appearance is the name of, you know, four things. 
let's take a look first paragraph size number two multiple ideas number three white spaces and the last one is headings now paragraph size a good paragraph for high impact language is the one which has three to four sentences not more than that a good paragraph like if you remember we talked about the length of a sentence also and uh, if you remember I, I, I told you that uh, a good sentence is the one you know with average on average has uh, 17 to you know 20 let's say words exactly the same way a good paragraph is the one which has three to four you know sentences so sentence paragraph length is very important number two multiple ideas when we were talking about, you know, different types of uh, simple paragraphs, and there I told you that a paragraph has unity in it. Now, unity means whatever is your central idea, sportive details flow out from the central idea, and conclusion also flows out from either the central idea or the sportive details. There has to be your paragraph has to be highly, highly unified. One single subject to be discussed you know, in paragraph. Now, point is, if there are some multiple ideas in your paragraph, what to do? Should we break our paragraph into two? I would say the better option is uh, itemize those multiple ideas. Itemizing multiple ideas means that when you do not break your sentence this way that having in second paragraph another central idea and conclusion rather multiple ideas i mean itemizing multiple ideas means that in the same paragraph you you know use some bullets for example one two or three or a b or c this is called you know itemizing you know your multiple ideas if you come back on uh, to the screen you can take a look that in this paragraph, what we did actually, first we, you know, checked the uh, paragraph size. Then we introduced multiple ideas like one and two. We itemized them. And third, you know, point is white spaces. Have lots of, you know, white spaces in your writing. And the last one is if you can use headlines, that would be wonderful. Because headlines, you know, create pictures in, uh, you know, reader's mind. This is what actually is called high impact language. So, my dear students, today we talked about three things, multi-paragraph composition. And then we talked about uh, how to analyze an essay topic. There we discussed three things. Number one, strategy. Number two, content. And inside the content, different prompts, which are aspects of your writing. And then number three, we talked about high-impact language. In high-impact language, we discussed Three things that high impact language is the name of three things high impact word high impact sentence and high impact appearance i hope you understood what we actually mean by high impact language and uh, with this uh, thank you very much and uh, hope to see you you know next time with a new topic take care of yourself bye bye